Yo, what's up, everyone? Uh, today I'm actually be going over how to play Viract, so let's get started real quick. See, I'm gonna be going in a lot of detail on this map and some concepts that people normally misunderstand or do wrong. So, starting out, I'm actually gonna start out with telling or talking about. Basically, this is an offline map, which is pretty obvious to most people, but if you're a newer player, you won't understand this. Basically, um, when you're playing this map, you want to have Steam on offline mode, because it removes Mule Kick from the map, and you don't need Mule Kick at all on this map, so it's better to play without Mule Kick, because of reset, obviously. You save about 40, I think, minutes, so just turn Steam on offline mo mode when you're playing this map. And then obviously, if you want to keybind to this map, because on offline mode it's weird, like sometimes they'll say the servers aren't available, so you'll probably have to launch this map through a keybind. So I'll leave that on screen now if you want to use that in the config. So you can actually just use the keybind to load the map. Okay, so, starting out, I'm gonna go through like the early rounds real quick. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the early rounds, but. Basically, I break those windows so that I can shoot through them later, and because of OCD, so you don't have to break the windows. There is one that you have to break, I'll show that in a sec. You have to break this one right there, that's the most important one to break. That, those two are kind of good too, and then this one, of course, on that side. That one's just Pretty important to break. Also, shoot those on that side. So, when I get to instas, if I ever get to instas, that um, I can actually just throw the nades through the windows instead of, or like shooting through the windows. Even on the lower rounds, those windows kind of block you from being able to shoot through them. Oh yeah, you also obviously you want to be on jug side. So, no matter what strat you're playing, I don't think there's any strats for you spawning on car side. So, um. Basically, in the first round, there's that spawn, the back spawn, and then the right spawn. So, depending on what spawns you get, you're gonna wait till about I think 18 seconds is a good mark to start throwing nades. If you have a back spawn, you can throw one like that, and then that one, and then kind of glance at the right spawn and hope you don't get it. So I just got really bad spawns, so I'm gonna restart actually. Normally, you you at least want two in the courtyard, so you can at least be able to buy the Gear. So that's why it's important to get spawns in the courtyard. And that's why sometimes whenever I get like all there was one time earlier I got like all the zombies in that window. It's really weird. I've never had that before on any map, but I got that the other day and I was like it, it wasn't too good of a round time because I didn't get any zombies in the courtyard. So those would be good spawns right there. That there would be like average I guess, but that's good enough for this. So, that's about an average time I'd say for me in round one. It was like 27. And then I think the best I've ever got was like 20. Okay, I got like four zombies in that spot, or five, I think. It's ridiculous, but once again, you do the same thing in round two, pretty much, but you stay in the courtyard a little bit longer. So, I'll throw that back nade. And sometimes the nades don't kill them on round two. It's really weird. It's kind of inconsistent, but it worked well there. So. That was a pretty slow round two, actually. That's like... If I got any worse than that, I would probably restart in like a normal game, but obviously I'm not going to restart now. I'm just showing you how to play these. So this is actually going to be my last round that I actually um, play. Well, no, no, no. Sorry, I said that wrong. I'm not actually going to really play through round four. I'm just going to... Because you pretty much play three and four the same. Except for round three, you can do different things. Like, obviously, you're going to use two nades on one spot on this round. On four, I'd stay in courtyard a little bit longer than three, though. I leave courtyard pretty early on three. Just so I can take care of the other spawns first, and then I can come back to it later, if that makes sense. So if I do have one more, I can kill him. 
So that was a pretty bad run three times as well, but I'm not really trying too hard in this game. Uh, once again, I don't know if I said this already, but I'm going to leave... At the end of every round, I'm going to leave what like, a good time is. I, I'll just play round four, actually. So yeah, like round one, I'll just leave timestamps, I guess. Or like, I'll leave it... I may leave it in the description. Yeah, definitely look in the description during this video, because there's going to be a lot of useful stuff. For sure. Oh yeah, and then... You want to make sure to only let one window get onboarded here, so you can play Nukarps later on. And I would say, drop-wise, double points nuke is the best drops you can get in round 4. But only if you get double points and nuke together. If you get nuke by itself, it's actually really bad. I'll talk about one in a second. Those are some really weird drops. I've never had that many before in round, on that round. That's why MP40, so I'm gonna be there a little bit late. So yeah, you just wanna be able to get to here, and if you have enough points, actually just open up here. Normally I would have enough on double points, but for some reason I don't. So you wanna be able to open the store up. But if you have let's say you're a decent amount of the round. Let's say there's um You've killed up to the point where there's 55 zombies. It's probably not worth opening this door at this point. Because you're already halfway through the round. And then they're just going to be all over the place. So it's not worth opening that door too late in the round. Um, let me pause real quick. So, basically on round 4, it's good to get double points nuke. But if you just get nuke by itself, it's actually really bad. Because you're not going to have enough points to even get into kitchen most of the time. Now, if you can get into kitchen, then it's fine. But... If not, it's better to just get nuke on round 5. Um, because if you're just stuck in power, it's going to be really slow. So, that's why nuke's bad on round 4. But that's why double points nuke is the best drop so you can get on that round. I'm about to die, actually. So, I'm actually going to stop trying or stop playing normally now. If you don't know, there's 69 zombies on this round total up to this point. If you didn't get a nuke. So yeah, nuke's perfect on round 5. It's the best time to get it, I'd say. Unless you get double points nuke on round 4, because then you can actually open that door normally. So yeah, nuke's a great drop to get on round 5. But at um, like round 6, it's kind of useless, because you're already in the 2 window spawn at that point. So... I'm going to quickly go over some little details about playing here. I like to break all these windows so I can actually shoot through them later, like I said earlier. So same concept here. And because OCD, so let's say you end round, you want to run like this. Oh, I don't have enough points. Okay, so now you want to hit the box. And then you want to try to get another hit in if you don't have a patch. It's worth doing like this. So that's the best way to hit the box, you hit it twice every round. It's not good to do this with a patch though, it's only it's good to it's better to just do one hit at the end of every round. The reason you do this without a patch though is so you can get more hits in to try to move it faster. I'm gonna talk about Um drops here. Sure, I kinda wanna go back in though. Okay, so once basically once you're on a new cycle. Or you don't have to be on a new cycle. You just want to be not on your last drop of your cycle. That's when you want to leave the room. Because if you're on the last drop of your cycle, you're probably going to get a carp when you go down. So, basically, let's pretend it... Normally, I leave that room once I have enough points to. So, with a patch, normally, like, around 10 to 12 would be perfect. So, I would run here at the end of the round. Obviously, wouldn't say a zombie. This would be the round's changing. And then you want to try to get to Jug. You want to buy Jug as soon as the round is just starting. Like, as soon as the number is by. If you're buying Jug, that's, like, really good. It means you have good movement. So, you want to be here. Of course, if you have Ray Gun already, it's good to... Well, it doesn't matter what gun you have, really, but... Um, normally, there's going to be, like, one or two zombies going up the stairs. So, you want to check here quickly and kill them both so you don't get really late zombies. Coming from the stairs at the end of the round. Because they'll be there if you don't kill them. 
from there. So, yeah, so basically what I was saying earlier about the drops was that you want to be on a new cycle or not on your last drop at least because if you're on your last drop, you're going to come down here and you're going to get a carp and then you're going to get another carp on your next cycle. So it's bad to do that. Instead, just wait till you're on a new cycle. Unless there is one exception though. If you have a nuke as your last drop, it's worth it because then you can actually save like 15 seconds of time. That's normally how I play. I play to try to get a nuke in this room because if you're playing with a patch or if you just get a first box setup without one, you're only going to be spending one room outside of speed room. So you're getting 15 seconds by getting a nuke outside of it and you're actually not losing any time at all. So, um, I don't know if that made sense, but hopefully it did. You just basically want to get in, try to your best to get a nuke on this round that you leave. So yeah, that's that. And if you do get a nuke and you get a carp, let's say you get a nuke and a carp, it's good to just pick up the carp as well because you can actually make it back in time. Or if you get a carp at the end of the round while in that room, it's good to pick it up so you can actually make it back in time if you have good movement. But if you don't have uh, trust in your movement, it's probably not worth doing. Normally, I can get back to kitchen by the time the round's starting, so. Yeah, you want to try to only get one carp into the whole game. That's your goal, pretty much, is to get one carp into the whole game. It's possible to have no carpenters the whole game, actually, but it's like, it might be a little bit slower. Because then you'll have to save, like, one zombie and go and rebuild these. And then, like, some of these, maybe. But... Yeah, I don't know if it's worth doing that, but it can be. Okay, so there are two little things that I forgot about that I'm going to go over quickly. So, i actually seen people... I see this a lot, and it really makes me mad. Um, if you can't make it to this door, let's say you get a nuke on round 4 and you don't have enough points to open that door. I see a lot of people running out of this room mid-round and like killing the zombies there. That's a very bad mistake, because then they're going to be all over the place. They're going to be in the wall, which just takes forever to come out of the wall. They take so long to open that window. And then, of course, they're spotting in the courtyard, which isn't hard to deal with. You just shoot them through the window. But the wall spawn is really the big problem. So it's better just to stay in the power room to get enough points to open that door. And as soon as you get enough, you open it. Normally, I come down here and then just... My crosshair are right on there, so as soon as they walk in, I kill them. And then I can open the door and leave. And then you have some light spawners, but it's fine. So yeah, I just want to talk about that. And then, also, if you aren't playing with the patch, and you move the first box, you can actually get the box there. So you can pretty much do the same thing every round. You can come out and hit it once. Let's say you have bad guns, you can come out and hit it once. And then just wait like that to see. And if you get something not worth the getting, you can come back quickly. You might have some spawns. If you get a gun, you won't be able to pick it up without one spawning in the courtyard, probably. Or in, maybe even in the wall, worst case. But if you get one in the wall, I think you can actually see it from here. So. It's either here or the balcony. Uh, maybe both, but. Yeah, so the wall spawn is very bad. And also, if you're coming from there, let's say you pick up, or let's say you're coming from here and you don't have good enough movement to be able to make it to power in time, and you get one zombie in the wall, but pretend it hasn't been aborted yet or something. Well, let's say they're unboarding it, it takes so long for them to abort it, especially if it's only one. So if you get carpet in this room, it's good to just wait to pick it up after you, the round you get back, if that makes sense. Because if you pick it up, it's going to rebuild that window and it's going to take them double the amount of time, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about these early rounds, I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. Just ask me, hopefully everything I made, or I said made sense. If not, um, just feel free to ask below. I'll answer every comment. So this is going to be gameplay from one of my previous games I played. I actually played this game last night, and... Sorry for the bad quality, but it's really, um, I have really bad internet, so I can't stream at a higher quality than this. So here, this is just an example of the lower rounds. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the lower rounds, because I've already got a video on it that I'll link in the description. 
Now, it's not the best video, but I will go over some uh, misconceptions from that video. So there's a difference between hoarding up, how I would hoard up on round, let's say, round 40. Round 46, I hoard up much differently from how I would on round 25. So people will pretty much be killing themselves if you were to hoard up like I do on 25 on this round. You would be pretty much killing yourself. Um, so this is how I would normally hoard up. Let me show after this hoard. It's going to be kind of sketchy in these rounds since I'm not running through kitchen because I want to be faster. I would definitely suggest running through kitchen. I had to waste a monkey there. I shouldn't have had to waste, but... I would suggest running to kitchen and boarding that window there. I already talked about this in my video, but... I don't actually do this until 47 in my games. Just because I want to be faster, of course, but... I would suggest doing this in your games on, on like, 43. Just so you can get a feel for, like, how fast you can kill the hordes and how slow it takes and because if you kill the horde too slow you're actually going to get trapped and die from the zombies coming out of there too early that's why we board the window is so we can actually um be able to kill the whole horde without them spawning in so that, that wasn't actually how i hoarded up either just then i kind of ran past speed i have to use my betties here so this is how I would use my beddies. I already used two of the stacks. And then I actually get a double insta here, which is really awkward. I didn't have enough ammo for the second one either, so it was really awkward. Okay, so now this is going to be um, more gameplay from a different game, from my 50 SR game. And this is actually a good example. Let me go back. This is a good example of how to hoard up, so... Let's watch this. So basically, you just board this window, you run through, and you go back. It's about the time they're gonna be jumping out. Sometimes they stay longer, sometimes they stay less. It's really weird. But. And then you can stack beddies along that wall there. Those are really helpful in the 40s. I don't really do that too much in the lower rounds. I just like to make my beddy stacks bitter, bigger. Bitter. <laughs> I like to make my Betty stacks bigger on the lower rounds, and then I just like to stack them on the wall sometimes in the later rounds, because it's really helpful. Not really sure why I threw a monkey there. Uh, it's not very optimal. Normally, I would just pick up the nuke right away. But... Well, I wouldn't pick it up right away. I'd pick it up once they all spawned in, so... Here's another example how to hoard up. It starts working better the later rounds you get, so... I think it starts working good on like 27 but you have to go really slow in the 20s if you're gonna hoard up which it's a lot slower to hoard up in the 20s so i wouldn't do it um i just hold the window in the back i'm not sure if i already said this or not but i just hold the window in the back in the 30s and um just shoot the zombies in front of me and then shoot them in the window and there's not many in front of me with the ray and then whenever they break out of the window i throw a monkey off the back of the wall i go through this doorway here, sorry. I don't know if you can see my cursor. I'll walk through this doorway right here, if you can see. I'll walk through there and then throw a monkey off the back of the wall. Once they break the window out. So that's how I do that in the 30s. And that starts working, or that stops working at about 37. I think it's 37 is the last one you can really do it and it works. But uh, it'll take a lot of practice for sure. That's the easier part. I think the lower rounds, let me go to like... I played this way till 29 or 30, actually. I played till 30. I think 30 is the last round I do it on, where I kind of, like, freestyle hoard up, which is part of the misconception people took from my video. Like, I was watching someone play. I don't remember who it was. I think it was Gwid. It was a long time ago, but um, he was actually hoarding up like this in the 30s. Okay, here. So I just jumped through... Like that. It's not really not the sketchy. I, I don't know. That's kind of weird. I also like to use the LMGs in the lower rounds. 
like 21 and below is whenever the LMGs really kill, but I wouldn't really use it unless you have to, 21 plus, or past 21. 21 is the last round I would use an LMG on. And when it comes to the Winter's Hell, um, this is a question I'm asked a lot, is what I don't use the Winter's Hell, because I know Slayer and Phoenix and a lot of these people, Magic Glowbox, all these people will actually start for the Winter's Hell. But it's actually worse to get the Winter's Hell. It's actually better to use an LMG. And um, I don't want to talk about it too much. You can go in my chat and use the command exclamation mark hell. And you'll know why, but basically it's just really glitchy. It doesn't kill the zombies with every, like, every shot doesn't actually work. Like on the instas, if I try to shoot the zombie, sometimes it doesn't actually do anything. Um, whenever I kill a zombie with it, it'll leave an invisible barrier up, so I throw a nade and it'll bounce off the hell. And it actually kills less zombies than doing instas. I actually have a spreadsheet on insta weapons. So it's like, I think the hell is like 6th behind the glill and the commando and the aug i think it's even behind the aug so i test a lot of weapons i think it's tied with the mp40 almost maybe the mp40 is a little bit better a little bit worse is one of those so yeah that's how bad the hell is for instance and people will say well the hell does damage to the zombies later on and that could help but would you rather be able to do a little bit of damage to the zombies to make them die faster or would you rather be able to kill 50 more zombies every insta? Well, I wouldn't say 50 more zombies, but it's more like you're killing 20 more zombies every insta. So that's a whole near horde you're getting. Maybe it may be even more than that, actually. I think it's more than that. Because every minute, every one minute that you have of instas, you're getting 50 more kills. So it's about 25 zombies. So a little bit more than a horde. Uh, maybe more than that actually, but Hal is just really bad to use. Avoid the Hal if you can. Um, just use the RPK or the HK. It's way better. Now between the HK and the RPK, it's about the same. I think the HK is a little bit better because of the ammo in the mag. So take that how you want to. But the RPK is better in the lower rounds because it shoots faster. Obviously, I think the RPK is a little bit better than the lower rounds. That's why. I actually use it more and it loads a lot faster so that's actually why i prefer the rpk so they're about they're about even i would say now the hk does have a little bit more ammo total so i don't know you can use whichever one you get i guess doesn't really matter okay so now when it comes to picking up nukes um this is one of the last things I'm going to go over. Let me try to see if I can find an example of this. It's going to be hard. Okay, whatever. So, oh, here's a, here's a nuke. So, when you're boarding up this window, um, this isn't a good example. For some reason, I'm throwing monkeys. On, okay, I don't know. So, whenever you're, you get a nuke and they're coming through, you want to actually board this window. And then you want to run like a circle and board it up one by one. Because if not... These zombies are going to come in, they're going to push you against the window, and you're going to get stuck. And for some reason, the zombies that are behind the window will actually hit you through the window. While, um, even though they're supposed to be dead, they're, they still hit you through the window for some reason. It's a really weird glitch, but they'll do it. So be careful of that. You'll get stuck on the window and you'll die. I actually died like that a few times when I was new to the map. So yeah, that's something you got to learn. And then when it comes to camping, honestly, the only advice I can really give you, though, other than everything else I just told you, like, obviously, everything I'm telling you there is just to be faster, except for that nuke thing. The only real advice that I can give you is to practice, like, uh, I've played this map for about a year now, and I'd say I've gotten really good at camping. I've gotten to the point where I can pretty much survive more often than not, so... Um, yeah, I, I would just say practice for sure, because I used to not be able to get past around fucking 25, and then just practicing has got to be really good at camping. Definitely play with a patch while you're learning the map. Yeah, I would suggest using a patch. Even if you're against patches, just use it for practice until you're comfortable with 40+, plus and you can take it out or whatever. 
Uh, that's some more advice I'd give you. Maybe this will be a good example of a nuke. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I'm not even boarding it for some reason. Here, yeah, so I run, like, all the way out here for some reason. I don't normally do that. I was playing really weird this game. I'm not, I'm not looking back at it. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. Um, whenever, before you're done camping, make sure you have three monkeys. If not, you're going to have to make Betty stacks. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, you'll have to make extra Betty stacks back here. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I got for camping. Just make sure you have three monkeys before you leave the room. Um, people actually ask me what round do you stop camping as well. Uh, you don't have a certain round you stop camping on unless you want to. But I would suggest going until you run out of ammo. Fully. Unless you just want to pussy out and stop on like 40 or whatever. But I would go until you run out of ammo. That's the fastest way to play. It's not like 5 where, you know, you have like a certain round where you stop camping on. Because I think 5 it's actually slower to camp past a certain round. But it's not like that on Baruch because instances actually make them up faster. This does make the map a lot faster, so. Yeah, definitely, definitely make sure you have three monkeys before you leave, though, because if not, you're not going to have any more monkeys until 163, so. Yeah, um, you're going to need those monkeys for sure, because that's your only way of getting out of situations. And, of course, you're not going to get any more until instas, which is like 48 hours in the game, so. Yeah, I'll be back. Okay, so, now, there's one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to camping, so, let's say it's around 48 in this scenario, and then, let's say we have a Betty stack back here, so we have a full Betty stack, pretend it's a Betty stack, and then, the round is almost over, let's say you've already got four drops in the round, you've already got all your drops, so you can't get any more drops, so it's not worth using your Bettys in this scenario, since we've already got all of our drops, we only want to use our Bettys to get our max back, or an insta or something. That's the only time we use our Bettys, is to get our drops, we don't need to use it just to kill the zombies. So that's, this is the time where we would actually wait till they all spawn in and get the horde up, and then we would go through. Of course we'd probably have the ray gun in this scenario instead of the ballistic knife, but... all of these so you would bring them back here like it's a normal horde you could do like stalling a little bit but it's not worth stalling too you don't want to stall too much you just barely want to stall since you've already got the whole horde together so then you would come through here make sure they're all behind you then you hit the trap and then you hurry you want to at least make it back to here before they die if not i'll show you what to do if you don't but the reason you're going to do that is so you don't break carpenters, obviously. And if you don't even make it back to power, you're really screwed, to be honest. So, you can at least make it back to the kitchen for your safety and for carts, obviously. Okay, so, yeah, so then you pretty much rinse and repeat. Use that till the round ends. It probably should end soon because it actually doesn't take too long. If you've already got all your drops in that round, that means you've killed enough hordes, so you're pretty much done with the round soon. Single trap is good in this scenario, but it's not always good. Um, you only want to do this if you're not trying to dedicate to starting traps. It's pretty slow, yeah, but it's worth doing if you want to keep camping. And then obviously once it's the end of the round, you want to... This goes for any time. This doesn't only go for single trap. This goes for anything. Of course, if it's the end of the round, you want to hit from this side. You need to trap from this side so that the round ends faster so you don't have to go through there. Obviously, you don't have to go through the whole hallway. You can just end it there. That's if you know it's the end of the round. And you can save about 10 minutes in your total in your game if you end the round there. So it's very good to do that in the round every round so this is how you play single trap and then some other other tips for camping um obviously if let's say you fucked up in the window the zombies they'll see come out here they're cutting you off from all ways and you have no choice but to open the door don't be scared to do that don't be scared to open the door if you have to and then of course um there's trading 
which I'm going to make a whole video on trading, so don't read too much about it. Normally, I don't trade. It's hard to explain. People will probably um, have this misconception that I trade dragons a lot, but basically, I only hit whenever I'm out of ammo on my raygun, and I trade, of course. And I tr of course, I want to try to get the raygun back like that, but let's say... If I, if I already get the ballistic knife first, I would just take the ballistic knife and start traps. If it's around like 46, and I'm going for a ray trade or a speed weapon trade, that's what I want. Whichever one I get first, I take, and then I start traps. So, so you get the ballistic knife, I'd probably go through that trap. And then here's a small tip as well. You can actually come here. You can actually come here. Let's say this door is still closed. You can actually come in this room and have a two window swan. So you can actually save a little bit of time. So you can just go straight here and then hit the trap. You don't have to do the cutback or anything. You save a lot of time that, doing that. And they won't be pulling from all the way from power. They'll just be right there and dying. If that makes sense. So yeah, those are some small tips when it comes to the media, um, the middle part of the game. So I'd say whenever you're, you're deciding if you want to keep camping or not. And then of course, maybe you could even do ray trades till 55 no one's really experimented with that I, I actually might try that at some point where i just do ray trades and like see how much worth it is to camp if you get like good trades so maybe like camping like 55 would be something interesting and like it would be kind of fun too so maybe i'll do that one day just to experiment with it but that's all i've got when it comes to this part of the game i'm gonna make a whole video on trading soon that should be out this week if i actually want to make it hopefully so yeah that, watch out for that video it's gonna come soon and that's all i've got for this okay so let me show this example quickly i even actually talked about this before but this is how you can actually use beddies on higher rounds i like to make stacks of beddies until about round 70 i'll show you where it's the same place i stacked my beddies in the early rounds just on this balcony area over here and this is actually like a really bad idea here because i've got 10 zombies so it's like it's kind of sketchy and i actually almost die here you'll see i get really lucky but um i have enough beddies to be able to kill these zombies at least i think i do uh, uh basically i would not bring more than five zombies back here it actually pays off here because i get lucky and you'll see why but uh there's actually let me talk about one more thing real quick so i actually don't take them from this side as you can see it's better to take them from this side so you can have more of an escape uh, route. So yeah, basically I drag them on this right wall and I jump a bit prematurely. See, I got actually the nuke there that saved me, I think. I'm not actually sure if the nuke saved me. I think that Betty's actually killed them all. Or actually, no, I got stuck for a second. I, I felt it. I got a double points. I'm going for my max here. The reason I'm doing this is so I can get my monkeys back. Uh, you basically want to do this, I have two monkeys here, and I want to get my other monkey back, so that's whenever you would want to stack Betty's is to get your max, or to get an insta, to actually play faster, or a nuke. So, my cycle actually didn't have an insta in it, because I just came off a double insta on 47, but it was worth it to get the max, and I actually end up getting the max, and I bring less zombies on, I think around 60, 64 is when I do it, so... I guess I'll have to show how to use an Insta once you get one. I actually haven't experimented too much with using the Insta. See, I jumped through the trap early so I could actually take these zombies through the beddies. So let me show this. Um, I think I went around the table here. You don't have to go around the table with only four zombies. If they're already grouped together, you don't have to go around the table like this. But it's good to do that with the whole horde. So... There, I almost got trapped. That's why you want to only bring a few zombies that, back there. If I had more than two, I probably would have died. And then I just end the round with the Betty. So I got really lucky this game with my drops. I got a double insta on the last round camping, which is perfect. Of course, I could have had a better max because I actually had a double max on 46. But your last round camping, if you get a double OC, you're gonna be you're gonna be maximized on time. And if you have three monkeys, it's actually not worth stacking Betty's back there. So 
take that how you want to. If you already have Insta and Max out of your cycle, then it's probably not worth stacking Betty's. I've actually made a video on how to deal with the zombie in this window before. There's multiple ways. There's the way Slayer does it, of course, where he actually goes in that corner, but like obviously not backing himself into the corner, and he just MP40s it. That's I think that's probably a really good way to do it. So you're, all the zombies, this is really hard to explain. So basically, you want to stand in the middle of this trap, because if you stand too far to the left, they're all going to pull to the left side, and if you stand too far to the right, they're all going to pull to the right side. So you want to stand right in the middle to where the right side zombies go through the right side trap and the left side zombies go through the left side trap. So basically, the way Slayer does it is really smart when he gets a zombie in the window. He goes to this side, so all the zombies will pull to this side. So he can actually jump through the right trap safely, but actually dealing with this zombie is the hard part. Because you can easily get trapped in the corner. I remember him actually showing me a clip where he, yeah, like, he thought he was stuck and he like got out of it somehow. It was really, it was really insane. But um... Yeah, that's the way Slayer does it. I'm sure you can watch clips on his channel to see how he does it. If you want to see that in more detail. The way I do it, though, is probably the safest way. Uh, normally, obviously, there's the old-fashioned way where you can just MP40 it to stall it until the, all the zombies are dead through the trap. Of course, there's things that can go wrong with that, though. Like, you can get, like, triple hit from it, and then you're going to be fucked. That's ac actually how I die this game. Uh, I got, like, triple hit from it or something. And then I wasn't feeling comfortable jumping through the trap. That's something I could get better at, though, is, like, I'm not really feeling too comfortable jumping through that trap sometimes. But I actually have a video on my channel for you to find the safest way to do it. Which is just to do an extra loop. And basically, you just check the courtyard. So let me see if I can find an example of me checking the courtyard. I may do it here. If I don't, though, you can just watch the video that's on my channel. It's called New Way to Start the Round, a Double Tap Trap, and something else. So there is one more way, and this is for if you get multiple zombies in the window. I don't think anyone's actually taught about this yet. So actually, this is kind of complicated, so let me... Sorry, let me go to Black Ops. So yeah, feel free to comment down if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be glad to answer them. I might forget something as well, so check the description for, sh for sure. Because I might forget some stuff. So let me just buy the bar, I guess. So just pretend this is the MP40 because I forgot to buy it. Okay, let me turn off fast gameplay. So now, if you get a zombie in the window, or hold on. Yeah, it's going to be really slow, so I'm actually not... I'm just pretending that there's two zombies. Okay, there is. Pretend they're faster, though. So, if you actually get two zombies in this window, you're not going to be able to stall them like this. So, you're going to have to actually come back here. And then, like, do it like this. And then, sometimes... Sorry, let me get rid of these zombies. So, if there's two zombies, you come back here like this run around them and then they're actually going to pull to this trap so it can be safe to do this unless you have a really late zombie coming through which is actually this is how i died i had one zombie and i didn't feel comfortable with stalling him because he triple hit me and when i get hit too much i just fall back like this and this is really bad because when i jump back they're going to be here and if you have a late zombie he's going to be here coming and then you're not going to be able to jump through this trap because you're going to jump into a few zombies and then you're not going to be able to jump through this trap because you're going to run into that zombie and you're going to have to get around him without getting hit twice. It's kind of weird. So this is how I died. But the way you can deal with this is actually not going back here in the first place. Unless you have two zombies. So if you have two zombies, you just come back here. You have to wait longer. If there's a zombie there, you just wait patiently. And then you're going to want to jump through this trap really fast and get around these zombies because they're probably already going to be here. So... You're going to want to get around them quickly. That's really important. That's going to be really hard to... That was really hard to explain. It's going to be really hard to do. But that's a very rare occasion. So... If it does happen, it's not going to be the end of the world. I've actually had that happen multiple times and not died to it. It's not even close to game over. That This is just a special occasion of whenever you have a late zombie coming. 
but normally a normal way it's gonna happen is there's gonna be two zombies you come back here they're all gonna pull to this trap and then you're gonna jump through fine so that's a normal occasion but if there is a late zombie just keep in mind you just want to wait patiently here if the zombies close to you, you may want to stall a little bit and then jump through try not to get hit at all and you just jump through quickly so i did my best at explaining that one more thing one mistake i made you don't want to jump through this trap unless you have to so basically that occasion i just told you about that's whenever you want to be jumping into this trap you don't want to jump through this trap if you don't have to i actually seen dave die a long time ago i remember him dying because he jumped through sideways and he got stuck on the wall it was really funny but he died getting stuck on the wall in like around 90. uh this is a kind of an awkward trap to try to jump through it's just a tight doorway so you don't want to jump through this trap if you don't have to the other reason you don't want to you don't want to jump through it is because the zombies will like turn this way it's kind of weird but it's better just to jump through this trap and one mistake i made when playing black ops shot the first time i'd actually run this way and you don't want to do this because once again they'll come toward that way and then you'll just get stuck in this room those zombies are going to be right there already so you're going to be pretty much stuck here and then you're probably gonna die so it's bad to go through this trap and you don't you just want to avoid this whole area so it's better to go this way so that the zombies actually pull to the side and if you're a little bit late you can just jump around easily so keep that in mind when playing black op um let me show some other things so the way phoenix played he stalled in here a bit then he stalled in kitchen And then he waited. And I think he did this. We get a speed weapon. He does this. This is 30 to SKH. Oh, that was lucky. So, you can play Black Ops Shot many different ways. Um, there's many different things you can do. You can play it at like 33 SPH, is the slowest I would play it. If you really just want like around 100 on this map, 33 SPH Black Ops Shot is one of the easiest shots you'll ever do in your life. But if you're playing fast and 30 SPH, it's one of the harder strats. Just watch my gameplay or watch someone, watch Phoenix's gameplay is what I'd suggest. Actually, over mine, because my quality is really shit, so Phoenix's gameplay is probably, probably better. And he played it at 32 SPH, so if you want to play safer, I'd suggest watching Ferret. But if you want to play at 33 SPH, this is like the slowest you should play it. You stall here, you stall here, and then you wait here and then so you can see if there's an early zombie coming you don't want to stall in kitchen too long or else you'll stall and then they'll already be up here and then you'll get trapped in the doorway and you'll have to throw a monkey so make sure to not do that so that's why people do this and watch so you can actually see if they jump out of the window and then you can come through here and then you can do like a cut back here Break this window, sorry. And then you can do a cut back here. And then you can actually stall here if you wanna if you really want to. I would not suggest stalling here. Uh, I've only seen like one person doing that before. I've seen a few people doing it, but you don't want to stall here. The reason why is because if you get a zombie that comes out of this window really early, he can actually cut you off on this doorway. Or if you get a zombie in this window early, they can cut you off on the doorway. So you don't, uh, I wouldn't suggest stalling here, it's not very good. And then you can do a cutback here actually. If you want to play 33 SPH. You can do a cutback here, and then you can really stall a lot here. If you just really want to be safe. So that's how you play at 33 SPH, you do like every cutback possible. And then... You can actually just use A and you can just strafe left to right this is what i do you can it makes you stall them longer and you don't really get hit as easily so strafing left to right on these little in this little corridor right here is really good just make sure once you're at about this point once you bought mp40 ammo you should probably stop because if you're strafing left to right you can actually get stuck on this which i've never had happening before but be very careful about that because it seems like that could happen and then be careful about this corner. I actually like to do a little bit here if I have like really lit zombies coming through. Since I play it like really fast SPH. And then there's this little cubby area back here. If you have late zombies coming. If they're like right there still you can do a little cut back here. And they actually will keep pulling towards that way. 
and then obviously you want to pull to the left side so they come this side so you can have area to jump and then you want to hit the trap of course and then run through so that's how you play black up strat slower and of course if you have a zombie in that window you don't want to ever go in this cubby never do this because if you go in the cubby and you have a late zombie coming here there's gonna be one going this side and there's gonna be one this side and you're gonna get trapped so if you see a zombie in that window you just want to immediately go to the left wall and wait and then you want to keep waiting and then you want to strafe past them and if you get through you get through if you don't well you got unlucky i guess so that zombie in the window is really rare but it's very common if you play it faster sph so keep that in mind if you're playing at 30 sph you're gonna have that window zombie oh i didn't go through this side at all so it's actually faster to start the round in this room for obvious reasons because that side you have to do a lot more cutbacks than this side this side you just run straight you can stalk here you can stalk here if you want I say this side's easier as well. I think this is the easier side to play. And it's definitely the faster side, so. You can stalk here. I don't normally do that. But I do stalk here. And then you jump like this. And then you jump. I jump for this wall. And then I go to the left. But I don't go too close to the wall, obviously, because I don't want to get stuck. And then I just pull the trap. And you want to make sure you don't hit the if you're on controller especially if you tap square sometimes the trap doesn't pull uh this happened to me one time where i, I tapped it and it didn't pull and then i just re hit it and i had like six zombies to the trap is a really sick clip but unluckily for me twitch deleted it of course fucking dmca bullshit but i actually went back here if you have more than a few zombies you're gonna be fucked so i don't know how i got out of this but i was like stuck in the corner and then i just got out that happened to me in a solo game on like around 100 something. I think it was like 111. It was a really sick clip, to be honest. It was probably my best clip I've ever had. So yeah. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind is make sure you're hitting this trap. I've only had that happen once on keyboard. But it definitely will happen on controller. If you're a controller player, you're going to make sure to be holding square. Not just tapping. Because sometimes if you don't hit that trap, you, you're probably going to die. So that's something to keep in mind. Oh, yeah, there's a big thing here. You want to not board this window ever. Never put a board on that window. Um, the reason why is because they'll actually get stuck behind the window. If you do, if you board this window, they can actually easily get stuck behind it. So keep that in mind when playing the shot. Don't board that window. Um, you can stall them in the window if you want and then run past. Obviously, don't wait too long in the kitchen or you'll get cut off from all sides and then you'll be dead or have to waste the monkey. So... The way Dave plays it is he waits here until they all jump out and then he runs past them. He has like a weird cutback though. He'll actually like come back here until they're all here and then he'll actually like do this. I don't think it's very optimal to do that though. I don't think it's the safest way to play. And I don't think it's really fast either. So you can play that if you want to actually. Uh, Dave has how he plays Black Ops Shed on his channel. I think that's a decent way to play it. I'm not exactly sure how he plays it. I think it's like 31 SPH though. Like late 31 SPH. So that's how... You can watch how Dave plays it. He's still got his videos up. Obviously, I wouldn't go to the ones too far back. Because he's playing like some weird strats. <clears throat> Basically, black up strat. The, the, what makes a difference between playing fast and not. Is like... How many places you're stalling it. So... Um, it doesn't really matter. Let's say, for example, this cubby spot that I used earlier, or we'll, we'll use this one as an example. So this, this spot, the box, you can do this. You're losing time, yeah, but maybe you do that, and then maybe you want to do this cut back too, where you come back here and then turn past. But if you're doing both of those, maybe you, you instead of only want to stall with one clip here, maybe you prefer stalling less here. So you, you, you'll do more in those areas, but you'll do less in this area. So it'll actually be the, about the same time. Um, the same time as you would with um, just stalling two here and then not doing that extra, this extra spot. So, yeah, um... You can do a lot of different variations of black up strat, different things. And that's really what makes the difference between playing fast or not. 
Um, this is m this hallway is the main spot. So, if you think you can get away with only using one clip here, it's worth it. If you have like not many light zombies, but if you have a lot more light zombies, you probably have to stall extra. So, uh, that's what makes the difference between playing fast or not. So I, I could definitely be wrong, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, that's how I play Black Ops Strat. Um, I'll link many different variations. I'll link Slayer, I'll link Phoenix, I'll link myself, and I'll link, I think, Dave as well. I can link Dave. He plays it in an interesting way. So now... Um... When it comes to this wall zombie, if you get a zombie in this wall right here, then... It's pretty simple to deal with if it's unboarded. Now, if it's not boarded, or if it's boarded like it is now, it's probably the worst spawn you can get in the game. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but... How to deal with this that, that wall zombie is pretty simple. You just would stall here, and you would do a circle like this. So you would run in like a circle. So whenever you... Whenever it goes to stop and hit you, you'll actually just run around it. And then it'll group up with the other zombies. So that's one way you can do it. If the circle way doesn't make sense to you. The reason you do a circle is because if you just do left and right, you might get stuck on them. And if you just move backwards, of course, you're going to get stuck on them, guaranteed. So uh, it's bad to do that. You want to do like a circle. And then the other way to do it is um, you don't actually have to stall those zombies. So it's not as safe. But it is more safe to deal with this this zombie itself. So it's whichever way you want to do it is works. But you basically just stick to the wall. So you can stick to this side and then go to this side, or you can stick to this side and then go to that side. I personally prefer sticking to the double tap wall first and then going this side and then stalling. And then basically you just do it normal there. So that that wall zombie is not a big deal unless it's fully boarded, which I'll talk about in a second. So. The way you can do this cutback though, if you wanted to do this one, that maybe you like it. Um, don't go to the wall, because if you go to the wall, if you get an early window zombie, he's actually going to trap you in the corner, and you're going to die. So, instead of going to the wall, just come right here in the middle, wait, and then straight jump past. So, just in case, if he comes out and you're just walking, you might, not, you might get stuck on him. So, be careful and just straight jump past. That's why you jump. Um, um, so that's how you would do that this spot right here if you wanted to do that and then what else is there so I think I talked about this a little bit already but if you have the best spawn you actually don't even have to do the extra cut back in that room I talked about this in my video that I'll link in the description so I'm not going to talk about it anymore but if you have the best courtyard spawn you don't actually have to do an extra cap back in there. So now I'm gonna talk about what to do if the window is boarded. Now if the window is boarded and you get a wall zombie, let's say you get power a little bit late and you, you get one zombie in the window. You wanna have your audio on because you can actually hear the wall zombie spawning in from across the map. It's very loud. So if you hear like the rocks breaking down and you can also check from here, I think. So you just wanna do it normal. You would actually wanna go a little bit faster though on this side so maybe maybe not spending as much time in, behind the trap maybe you jump out with a few extra zombies still coming just to get faster on this side the reason why is because he could actually already be at the power door and trapping you that's why this is a, such a dangerous zombie and i'll show you Actually, and you don't want to stall in kitchen. If you have the zombie in that wall, you don't want to stall in kitchen at all. You want to go straight to the door and check. And if he's there, then then you wait till he's about right there. Then you run past, and then you go down here a little bit. And then you would want to stall him, and then like run through like that, if that makes sense. So then you would just keep going normal. But if that's if you go really slow on that side. If you go really slow on that side, you can do that. So if you, you can either go slower or faster on this side, but I would suggest playing faster. So you want to run to the door, check it, come back, stall a little bit. You don't want to actually go all the way out here. You just come here, stall, then check. Stall a little bit more, and then come out like that. 
and then install normal. And you want to come out here instead of using the comeback, you want to come out and check. If he's not there, then you do the comeback. Then you can actually do a jump spot here to see if the wall is broken. And normally he'll probably still be in the wall, but sometimes if he has two, if he has a buddy, they will be here already. So if not, he could be there. He could be anywhere. So this is why this jump spot's really good for information to see where he is. And if he's already at that door, you can just play like normal. But if he's just broken down the wall and he's running to double tap, you have to be really careful and you have to take it really slow. I would suggest just going straight to the door and then going here immediately. And then just grouping up with the zombies. And then you would want to spend as much time as you can stalling with the MP40. You would want to try to get three mags in if you can because those zombies are going to be really light. Because you didn't barely stall in kitchen, you barely stalled in power. And then you barely stalled at the box. So you would want to spend as much time stalling here as you can. So that's how you deal with that zombie. I uh, spent a lot more time than I thought I was going to, to be honest, on that. So hopefully it helped. Um, and if you get really bad spawns, I'll say you get like three in that window. And then like a few late zombies coming. And you have a zombie in that window. You can just go downstairs. Hoard up in Jug. Maybe you even have to go through Tommy or QR. Like this is... You can go in here and get the hoard. So just just going to jug. You may have to go to Tommy though. If there's some light. So be very careful. Uh you can go downstairs. I've only done that a few times total, but like you may have to do it. If you know you're guaranteed you're gonna die, it's just worth losing a little bit of time than downing and losing time, if you know what I mean. Uh that's all I've got for Black Ops Strat, I think. I'm trying to think. Yeah, that that should be all I've got for Black Ops Strats. Um, hopefully I didn't forget anything. Definitely check the description. I have a lot of useful stuff in the description, so check that for sure. And now on to Instas. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about Instacore rounds, but first, let me actually show you one more thing. Um, basically, if you, let's say you use your Betty's and you get an Insta, right? If you have more than 140 MP40 ammo, I would suggest keeping the MP40 for instas, or for the insta. And you can just watch this window, kill those, kill those, and then you can actually nade back there, or you can nade in this window. And then you basically just keep killing them, it's pretty straightforward. And that's pretty much how you play instas. But if you don't have more than enough, if you don't have enough MP40 ammo, just buy the bar. Uh, MP40 is a little bit better in my opinion, but a bar will do fine. People will call this Tommy instas, but that's not actually accurate. Um, it's more of nade instas than Tommy. It's it's both obviously, but you're mainly using nades. So what I would suggest, if you watch Phoenix's gameplay to watch instas, which I would suggest doing if you want to learn them, of course, but. Don't watch his earlier rounds on Instas. Don't watch 163, 165 through 180. Just watch 185 through 200, whatever. Just watch those rounds because he actually played the Instas wrong on the first, like, 10 Instas, I think. The first few. I'm not exactly sure how many he played wrong, but I know it was around 8. So, he lost a lot of time because of that. He was only using the Thompson. And that's why people get this misconception that it's only Tommy Instas is because they watch his earlier rounds on Instas, not his proper ones. So you want to actually not just use the Thompson, you want to use Thompson and nades. So it's mainly nades. You're throwing one nade there, one nade there, one nade there, and then another nade in front of you. And then you just repeat, so. And then basically you can like board this window. This is the best spot to stay. Sorry, I forgot to throw the one in front of me. It may be better to nade, like, a little bit further. I killed a zombie. So. There may be a better way to actually play instas. Maybe you could nade there or something. But you would have to Thompson that window. So, it could be better if you do this and then Thompson it. But it would be a lot harder to do. And it wouldn't be really that easy. So. Be careful with that. 
Maybe you could do it like that, where you throw your first nade back there. Thompson, throw your, let's say you do this. So, you nade, Thompson, nade, 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 nade. And then you could have a good cycle there. I think that could actually work really well. So that could work pretty well, actually. So you wouldn't even have to Thompson that window. I think that could be a little bit faster, actually. So keep that in mind. Maybe that'll work uh, if someone could try that out. I don't really want to try that, to be honest, right now. But uh, one day I might. So that's definitely a way you could play it faster. But normally, you just board this window, throw one nade, one nade. And there may even be a little bit better places to throw your nades in the courtyard. I'm not sure exactly what the best spots are. But you just want to throw it around that area of the barrel because there's a few spawns there. And you know, throw the other one in the back because there's a few spawns back there, obviously. And you know, throw your first one and your last one right in front of you. So I can cover the window and then the zombies coming from that doorway. So yeah, that's how you play instas. Pretty straightforward. Hopefully people will understand this, um, that he played his instas wrong actually first. So remember that. You're gonna watch his instas, don't watch his earlier rounds. And that's pretty much all I've got. Um, I'll leave in the description good times, so like a good 30 time, or like a good range of 30 times. Or I could just talk about it now. I'd say when it comes to 30 times, you don't have to worry about like, I normally get like a 31 minute. But that's probably not something you should be aiming for when you're new. Because most likely when you're new, you're going to be getting 35, 36 minute around 30s. And then you're still going to be getting 34s, which the world record was a 34 minute around 30s. So um, you're not too bad if you're getting 34s. But 33 is really what you should be getting if you've got some experience. Let's say you played for a few months now. You should probably be getting 33s. Of course, it just takes a lot of practice. Um... 33 is a good 30 time, if you're not using a patch, of course, but I would say a 31 and a 32 is what you really should be getting if you're, like, if you've played it for a while, so, like, of course, me, I don't know the last time I've gotten the 33 or a minute 30, but I would probably get it more often had I not been using a patch, for obvious reasons, because, you know, you're going to be losing time, so that's a good 30 time is anywhere from 31 to 33. That's what a good 30 time is. Um, so yeah. I'll leave 50s and everything else in the description. I don't really want to talk about it too much more. I don't want to make the video too much longer when I don't need to. But I will talk about Phoenix's game. I will talk about... Um, how much time he lost. So he took a down around 141, I think. He only took one down. He didn't remove a QR, actually, so that's something you could keep in mind. If you wanted to play at, like, 32 SPH, you could easily get a 207. Uh, if you're just decent at high rounds, you could probably get a 207 if you remove QR and play the same SPH Phoenix did. Because he was only 20 minutes off of round 207 when he reset. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Just one straight strat the whole game. You're not really doing anything different. There's no RNG in this map. Which is the reason I play it, because there's no RNG past around 50. So, he was slow, obviously he played 32 SPH, he can play a lot faster than that. And he played his first few instas wrong, I know I've already talked about it, but he lost a lot of time playing his instas wrong as well. So that's how you can beat Phoenix. Uh, you can save a lot of time. You can probably get like a 2, 210 easily, playing at 30, let's say you play at 31 exactly SPH. You could probably get a 210 playing like that. Um, now, people ask me what the max on this map is. And it's hard to say. I, I don't know. I can't calculate it exactly. But I would say probably a 212 is the most you could get playing Black Op. Maybe a 213 or a 214 if you play that strat at the start. Let's say you play that strat from 60 to 80. You could probably get like a 213 or a 214. So, keep that in mind. So that's probably a max for Black Op. Way of saying it. But anyway, that's all I've got for Verrucked. Um. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully, you guys can play Verrucked now. Hopefully, that'll help you a lot in your games. And 
for sure let me know if you learned something hopefully you did because this is a long video and yeah have fun playing product hopefully you can get good times and whatever and yeah see ya thanks for watching